Hello, everybody. I'm Vincenzo, here's Tim, here's Ralph. And um, the title of the presentation, as you can see, uh, tries to resemble Pulp Fiction. And this is the reason why we are dressed this way. So um, this has also a meaning during the talk, because we will see that uh, Ralph is going to solve some of our problems, like the wolf does in the film. And Tim is less tempered than me, so as a way to automatically find, find gadgets when it comes to return-oriented programming exploitation. So let's just start. Um, so I will basically do the boring part of the talk, the introduction and the overview, and then uh, Tim will explain the algorithm to find gadgets, and Ralph will talk about how to chain gadgets together by the mean of a compiler. Then we will show you some fancy demos, and we will hopefully discuss with you further works. So uh, this is like something obvi obvious to say, but if you ever try to write an exploit with some uh, non-executable page protection, oops, some, some non-executable page protection mechanism, you know that uh, you're, you're basically not having much fun trying to find a way to evade this, this countermeasure. So um, in the last few years, there were a few, a few research on how to evade this thing, because uh, nowadays it's really, really common to have uh, non-executable pages type of uh, countermeasure. Think of, I don't know, DAP, on uh, Windows, uh, the non-executable bit uh, on uh, Linux, and you have code signing on Hyphen and similar things on other mobile platforms. So basically, the, uh, the way you would go about uh, having a working shellcode uh, in those scenarios is by using return-oriented programming. Um, so so basically, uh, return-oriented programming, uh, this, the entire point of this talk came out because of two reasons. The first one is that team had to graduate. And the second one is that I and Ralph were trying to write an exploit for pawn to own. Um, so, so as you know, uh, the iPhone, uh, as I said before, so uh, the iPhone as uh, something called code signing that is basically a non-executable protection, uh, like, I'm um, sorry, a non-executable uh, page protection type of mechanism. And um, so, so what, what we found out while uh, writing the exploit for pwn to own was that uh, it, took, it took us a while to actually find all the gadgets, chain them together manually, and then do the, doing the debugging and uh, since, in the meanwhile, uh, Tim was uh, writing, uh, working on his thesis, we tried to combine both things. So um, let's let's start from the beginning. So on the we will so the technique that we're going to uh, explain today, the algorithms in theory can work like not in theory can work on every uh, ar on every architecture and uh, on every operating system. Uh, in this specific talk, though, we will uh, show you how to use them exactly uh, on, on the iPhone. So um, when you try to write an exploit on iPhone, you have to face at least two problems. The first problem, problem is code signing, and the, sen the second problem is sandboxing. So uh, as I said, code signing can, can be solved by using return-oriented programming. And as for sandboxing, in our specific case, we were apparently lucky because there was a bug in the sandbox policy of mobile Safari. So we were basically able to dump the SMS database of the phone. Um, so uh, probably not all of you are familiar with iPhone and with how code signing works. So if, if, you're, if you write an application for, for the iPhone, uh, you have to upload the source code to Apple Who's going, uh, which will basically, what happened is that Apple will sign your code with their private key, and the kernel, before executing your code, will verify that the executable page are correctly signed by Apple. So, um, so this is basically a, a way to, to have a non-executable non page in the process address space. Um, 
just um, so just one thing before uh, continuing the talk. Especially in the past, there were there were a lot of misunderstandings about explo exploit on iPhone because uh, there were some bugs in the way code signing was implemented until iPhone 2.0. So basically, uh, you were either able to uh, evade code signing or by using a jailbroken phone that didn't didn't uh, that doesn't have uh, code signing enabled you uh, you were you basically didn't have to care about sc code signing and therefore non -ex executable pages instead uh, for point one we really needed to write an exploit for a non jailbroken phone so this is was this was a bit harder so the way um so to get back to code signing the way code signing works is um you have some rules to follow so the f the first rule is that if a page as write permission in uh, in memory it can't have executable permission so you basically cannot change the permission of the page put there your shell code then change the permission back and try to execute the shell code uh then you can't have any executable pages on the heap and finally as i said only a signed page can be executed so Usually, the way you solve this problem uh, is, as I said at the, in the, at the beginning, return-oriented programming. So uh, you can think of, so in, the, in this picture, we have uh, an attacker controlled buffer and then a sequence of instruction that, uh, that are basically executed when, when the exploit is, uh, is launched. So uh, to, like, the simple, the simplest way to, to uh, look at uh, return-oriented programming is that the attacker controller buffer can be uh, compared to a crafted, a crafted stack. What you will have on this stack are uh, addresses of uh, instruction in um, in the text segment of libraries or domain executable, and you will then have a bunch of uh, variables that need to be uh, used by those gadgets uh, while they run. So what you what you are trying to do here is okay, get a few different uh, gadgets chained in together so that you are you are able to have a meaningful payload. And what happens basically um, when when your shellcode is first ex executed. It will at some point reach what, it, what is called a return sequence. A return sequence basically will pop the next instruction pointer from the stack. And this way you are able to continue the execution uh, using your payload. So um, return oriented programming basically consists of three parts. Uh, find the gadgets in the libraries or um, in the main executable and then chain them together to, to form a payload and finally you want to test the payload on your target. Um, so let me uh, just say one thing is, and uh, on most mobile platform nowadays, you don't, you don't have other space layout randomization. So this means that you can, if you, uh, if you can find, you can basically find gadgets in every library in, and in every uh, main executable in the other space. This is, uh, this makes things way easier for, for us because we have a lo a lots of uh, available gadgets to use. So now, uh, Tim is going to explain how to find gadgets in, uh, in a given executable, and uh, then Ralph is going to explain how to chain them together, and I will finally show you how to test your payload. So, Tim? Yeah, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to go over the part where um, it actually, we're actually going to talk about finding the gadgets and executables that are linked to the binary which we want to exploit. And we want to do this in an automated fashion. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is that we need a goal definition to what we actually want to achieve with this automatic gadget finding. Then I'm going to motivate the whole thing so that we all know, okay, mm, it's not the only thing, the iPhone that we want to exploit here. So we have more motivation than only uh, owning an Apple device, but also we want to own other devices of other vendors as well. <clears throat> then I'm going to explain what strategy we are going to use to achieve this goal and go over the steps which follow sequentially after that uh, in short detail so that you all know which path are we going to take. And then I'm going to go in algorithms into the details of this strategy so that we have the possibility to see 
what kind of algorithms we are going to use to actually find the gadget automatically in the binary. Then there uh, is going to be like a short uh, section over the results where uh, I'm going to explain what the results of, results of the automatic gadget finding are and how they can be used later on from the um, compiler that Ralph has written. And then um, some ideas of further improvement and how you could like make this automatic gadget finding better in the future will also be uh, talked about. Okay, what is our goal here in, um, in automatic gadget finding? What we essentially want to do is we want to build an algorithm which is capable of uh, locating, locating gadgets within a given binary automatically without major side effects. And side effects here are a very important issue because we use a different approach on gadgets than normally in return oriented programming have been used in the past. Because what we are looking for essentially is that we use instruction sequences completely to already fulfill the complete operation of one specific gadget. And we are not using single instructions before return to achieve this goal. We are also not looking at the binary itself in a raw format, but we are already use like the disassembly of the binary and our original functions. So that we can use this representation of the binary to find instruction sequences which, which are not um, unintended but intended in the binary already. So um, what's, the, what's the motivation to do this? We have like a whole lot of binaries, uh, a, whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of devices that today use ARM as their major platform to build upon. So iPhone is only actually one of them. And um, as we are friends of little spirits on devices that um, keep us from, uh, that uh, keep us having access to them even though the owner or the vendor might not even want that, um, it's kind of like the, the goal of the whole thing. So we want to be exe to execute our code in the presence of non-executable protection like uh, Vincenzo already said aka the non-executable bit or uh, write or execute, prim uh, write or execute uh, software protection and when the code signing of binaries is enabled like they have shown on the pwn to own contest at CancerQuest. But to make this very very clear uh, return oriented programming is not a technique to in any way evade a ASLR. So um, if, there, if there would be a platform which completely randomizes all the binaries on each start of the binary and each crash of the binary and the restart of the binary, then return oriented programming, because it relies on static addresses in the binaries, will not work in any way. So what's the, what's the strategy to actually achieve this goal? Um, as I, as I said in uh, the goal definition already, what we want to be able to is to build a program from parts of another program. So what we look at is the executable of the binary itself and we are looking at the library of the binary itself and take these, the parts that we need for our program in the binary from those sections of the program. These parts are named through the convention of return oriented programming gadgets but are kind of like only instruction sequences if you look at, look at them in a general way. So um, a gadget is then a sequence of usable instructions that you can use for a specific operation like um, A plus B or like a pointer increment, pointer decrement or a memory dereference or something like that. Um, and we have defined the term which greatly um, enhances the normal return oriented perspective on which instructions can end one of those instruction streams. And we call this instruction, instructions free branches. And if you have a small insight on the ARM architecture, then uh, you know that you have a whole lot of arithmetic instructions that are able to influence the program counter even though they are not a return instruction or not a call or a jump in any way. So we kind of define the free branch instruction as an instruction where given an instruction sequence that we execute, we are able to influence where this free branch instruction will let the, con let the control flow continue the execution within the, within the binary. And uh, yeah. Um, also, uh, we need to locate useful gadgets as I already mentioned most of the gadgets have side effects. We uh, need to use 
only useful gadgets.